Sam Nadell, who's head of government relations at Oxfam. He's joining us from London. Sam, good to have you with us. So just take us through the main findings of the report, if you can, please. Yeah, so we've had a really important set of commitments from governments and companies to achieve net zero, and these are absolutely welcome. Uh, but many of these targets are far too vague, and they shirk the difficult work of cutting emissions now in favour of relying on schemes to take carbon out of the atmosphere later. As I say, that's an important part of the mix. Uh, but the only uh, scalable and proven way we have at the moment to remove carbon from the atmosphere is, of course, by planting trees. And we've calculated today that once you aggregate the various promises that are being made uh, around the world uh, to remove carbon from the atmosphere, this would require a huge amount of land, potentially an area five times the size of India. Put another way, that's equivalent to all of the farmland on the planet. So, yes, we welcome net zero commitments. They're a good springboard for further action. Uh, but the worry is that they become a, a dangerous distraction away from the really hard work of reducing carbon emissions now. Absolutely. And Sam, I do wonder, the idea of planting loads of trees to try and suck up the carbon always seemed to me to be a great idea, but perhaps beyond what governments were actually going to try and do. But it was a, a target to be set. I mean, the groundwork is there. The direction is right, isn't it? It's just whether or not that as a, as a policy is actually useful enough. Exactly. I mean, as I say, the, the momentum that we have behind net zero and behind climate action globally is good, but we need to have an honest conversation about what this means in the long term and what it means for other big issues such as food security. So uh, we know that land, for example, is a finite resource and many people rely on it for their lives and livelihoods, not least the communities that we work with in the global south. And the worry is that if used at scale, these schemes to plant billions of monocultural uh, tree plantations could actually risk pushing uh, rural and indigenous communities off of their land, and it could drive uh, food prices up dramatically. So we've estimated that global food prices could rise by 80% by 2050 if these schemes are used at scale. And we've seen examples of this happening already in India, for example. There was uh, traditional lands have been fenced off there as part of a government-sponsored forestation scheme, and communities have been evicted and left homeless. So we need a solution that is both good for the climate and also good for people that tackles hunger. Now, Sam, just pull out a, a couple of bits from your report, because I, I know that there are some details in there where you say that there is an idea of, of reforesting the planet, because, of course, as we've seen recently with news out of the Amazon, that that's now a net emi uh, emitter of carbon dioxide rather than bringing in carbon dioxide. So there are plans to reforest, and, and you think there's a way that that reforesting can be done without taking up too much land and food resource space. Exactly. So afforestation and reforestation schemes are needed. But they have to be one part of a much wider mix. So we need more nature-based solutions and new innovative ways to make sure that the climate um, solutions don't actually drive up hunger. So, for example, we could have new forest management schemes and we support new efforts at agroforestry. So that's essentially allowing people to continue to farm on land while also growing trees that removes carbon. So we solve the hunger crisis and the climate crisis at the same time. All right, Sam Nadal from Oxfam. Uh, appreciate your time and, and best of luck in your work, sir. Thanks for being with us.